Hello! I hope you're well, welcome, or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're starting a new series on my channel. I am a huge reader of historical fiction. It is my most read genre by a landslide. To me, it is essentially the best of both worlds. I had two majors in college, history and English, and so historical fiction kind of marries what I love about both. It gives me that rich glimpse into how people lived, but it also gives me a really compelling story and characters and essentially a world to escape to that is very very different from my own. So I thought that I would do a series where I would share with you guys my top five for different historical periods. The first period that I wanted to talk about is the Italian Renaissance, and the historical Renaissance is the 15th and 16th century in Italy, obviously, when there were significant achievements in art, in science, in culture as a whole. It's also a really intriguing time in that there was a lot of intrigue and scandal because Italy at the time was broken up into these city-states and there were these really powerful families who really ran things and they would do just about anything to stay in power or to wrest it from another family. They're kind of a mix of Game of Thrones houses and also the Mafia. Like Cosa Nostra, who these Italian Renaissance families knew how to get stuff done. Anywho, so I'm gonna talk about my top five historical fictions set in the Italian Renaissance in no particular order. Here goes. <laughs> my first book in my top five is The Devil's Queen by Jean Caligridis. I remember reading and rereading this years and years ago. You can tell by the yellowing pages that I've had it for quite some time. It is a novelization of the life of Catherine de' Medici, who is one of my histor historical girl crushes. I remember reading this and finding it fascinating. There are, for better or for worse, a lot of myths and legends about Catherine de' Medici, claims of her being a sorceress. Odds are they were rumors created to discredit this incredibly powerful woman, but this book leans hard into these myths of sorcery. She pals around with Nostradamus. I believe there's she's even well versed in the art of poisoning, but it is essentially about Catherine de' Medici trying to get and to keep her sons on the throne. She is the queen consort of Henry II of France, I believe. She is the mother to three kings. She is the mother-in-law to yet another of my historical crushes, Mary Queen of Scots. I just really thought Catherine de' Medici's character was really compelling. She is definitely ambitious, 100% ruthless, but it's all for the sake of her children and their legacies, their futures. And I thought it was really impressive that the novel actually covered as much time as it did. And I loved this book so much that I actually bought several others by Jean Caligridis. But this one definitely has a special place in my heart. So I'm cheating a little bit with this next book because technically it is a trilogy. So Poison by Sarah Poole is the one I'll talk about, but there's also The Borgia Betrayal, and then the last one, The Borgia Mistress. This whole trilogy is a historical fiction guilty pleasure for me. Is there a lot of historical merit to it? Probably not, but it's one of those just entertaining books. Like, sometimes you don't want something that requires too much thought. Poison is about this character, Francesca, who becomes the Borgia family's court poisoner and is on a quest to avenge her father's death. But in kind of getting involved with the Borgias, she ends up kind of getting pulled into this world of intrigue and murder and suspicion and all of that stuff. Her task over the course of these books is essentially to keep the Borgias enemies at bay, you know, make sure they don't get knocked off, and, <laughs> and also grapple with her own past. One of the things I really enjoyed about this in particular was it was my first historical fiction that actually 
looked at the Jewish ghettos during the Italian Renaissance, which I thought was an interesting facet of these books. So maybe there is a little bit more historical merit than I thought. But yeah, it was just a really interesting historical thriller or historical suspense type series. And I almost want to call it a beach read because I just, I blazed through this series when I read it. Um, many, many moons ago. But the next book I couldn't find. I could find every other book by this author that I own except this one. It is Blood and Beauty by Sarah Dunnant. Her books are meticulously researched and you can tell that from all the details about the Italian Renaissance and what's going on politically, socially. It it's just a rich, rich text. Blood and Beauty, though, is another book on the Borgias. Rodrigo Borgia has fought the papacy and is Pope Alexander II? I was way off. <laughs> Pope Alexander VI. So he's bought the papacy and he is doing a lot of scheming uh, to better his own family. So his son Juan, his son Cesare, his daughter Lucrezia, and another reason I love this is because Caterina Sforza makes an appearance in this one for her war, war is probably a good term, with Cesare Borgia, so that's all really good. But there is a second book, In the Name of Family, which kind of picks up where this leaves off and continues on through more of the Borgia family history of power and struggle and all of that. But yeah, moving on. So the next book I want to talk about is another by Sarah Dunant. This is Sacred Hearts and this is different from the others on this list in that it's dealing with nuns. They're essentially highborn women who took the veil because dowries were astronomical and so a lot of noble families when they had multiple daughters would send some of them to the convent um, rather than trying to afford marrying them off to good families. Serafina, who is the main character, is a 16 or 17 year old girl who is basically forced into the convent by her own family because expensive, but also because she's been having a not so, not an advisable love affair. She's hellbent, ironically, on l escaping the convent and meanwhile the other characters, the nuns, are all trying to basically have an influence on Serafina in their own ways. The book is interesting in that although these women are cloistered, they actually have a lot of advantages that women outside of the walls of the convent wouldn't necessarily have. They are able to get an education, to pursue the arts, pursue sciences, to have meaningful conversations. <laughs> and so it's interesting to see this microcosm existing in what I feel like so many people feel is a repressed society. I also liked that although these characters were all nuns, they're not portrayed as saints. They are human and they have human failings and human ambitions and desires and interests and so that was really really unique and I think compelling about the book itself. So it was really interesting, beautifully written, but I really really enjoyed this. And finally, the Botticelli Secret by Marina Fiorato. It's not often that I think that historical fiction is funny, but I remember having a few lol moments when reading this. It is about the most unlikely pair, a prostitute and a monk. It almost sounds like a bad joke, like a prostitute and a monk walk into a bar, but yeah, they're thoroughly entertaining. <laughs> the main character is this prostitute Luciana and she ends up posing as Venus in Sandro Botticelli's La Primavera, so the spring, and after posing she doesn't get paid so she steals the painting. What ends up happening is that someone pursues her and is willing to kill to get the painting back. I think what really made this book was the chemistry and interactions between between Luciana and Guido the monk and Luciana was just a real a real treat to read. She's irreverent, she gives no ducks and it was just refreshing. Like it didn't feel super serious or buttoned up. 
It was a really enjoyable read. There's murder and intrigue, which I think all of these books that I've spoken about have because it's the Italian Renaissance and that's what these families in the Italian Renaissance did apparently, at least in fiction. <laughs> so I really enjoy the characters and the character development in this is what made me really enjoy it. I would say if you like mysteries and romance, this is probably a really good choice for you. Anywho, those are my top five picks for historical fiction set in the Italian Renaissance. I want to thank you all for watching. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe. On that, I'll see you guys next week. Thanks again for watching. Take care. Bye.